We all know our favorite Austrian artist sucked at painting. He was so bad, when he used Europe as his canvas, the entire world ganged up on him to erase his art. So what if Funny Mustache Man was actually a good artist? Today, Radolf Schmittler will turn his homeland into an art utopia in Victoria 3. But there's a catch. We can only build art academies. Make sure to watch to the end to find out if we can create a booming mega economy with only art. And who knows, maybe we'll form Greater Germany in the process. Yeah, this is gonna be painful. Our story begins in 1836. As one of the greatest superpowers in the world, Austria is in a unique situation where given the right leadership, they could industrialize and dominate Europe. But that's boring! Right off the bat, Mr. Schmittler decided to expand the art academies in the capital. While small and humble now, Funny Mustache Man's dream was to transform the Vienna Institution of Art into the greatest academy in the world. But that would be nearly impossible. Let me explain why. You see, the only things we can build are art academies, paper mills, because art needs paper, and government and military necessities. This means that literally every other good will have to be imported or built by our private investors. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a little tough. So right away, we got busy working that Habsburg charm. We began to send many diplomats to our neighbors to the Ottomans to repair our relations, to the Russians and French to secure trade agreements and alliances. After all, Prussia kinda wanted to kill us, but arguably the most important were these tiny guys. Let's in improve with Sardinia Piedmont, because if you look here, they have a base acceptance score of minus 45, but if we get it down to just 25, we should be able to snag it if we give them an obligation. Or 30, 30 actually, so that's even better. So theoretically, we could go around promising things to little countries for them to join our customs union, only to not actually do what we promised. Yeah, cause Funny Mustache Man was totally a trustworthy guy. After hearing our great leader's passionate speeches, just to be clear, that was a joke, he's a very bad man. We stole three German miners from the Prussian market. Now it's going to be very good to have all these guys in our customs union because they can build everything else that's not art, <laughs> basically. So while Schmittler and his diplomats were improving relations with the tiny guys, back at home, the art academy was growing. Hey, the second one was built. Eight. Second producer already. Alright, let's uh, encourage exports on those. And we want to try to find a market to export these two. And who better to sell art to than the empire that steals everybody else's art? Now with the rich British demanding more paintings, Schmittler expanded the art academies in Vienna. But that wasn't all as Schmittler's lovely words convinced the Pope to buy Austrian art. Look, the Pope would join our customs union. Let's snag it. Snag the Pope, boys! Nice! Look at the Austrian market though. Woo! We're dominating out here. One by one, art academies were constructed. In no time, we quickly became the leading producer of art. Which didn't really mean much because nobody was actually rich enough to buy art. You see, only pops with 20 or more standard of living could actually buy art. And well... <laughs> Chum, that's easy. Just raise everybody's standard of living to 20 so they can all buy art. You would be completely wrong if you thought that. Victoria 3 is a very complex game. But Professor Chum will explain everything. Basically, 600 rich capitalists buy 4 times more art than 16,000 middle class workers. These capitalists, the, the wealthiest capitalists we have, let's see how much fine art they're buying. They are buying 0.04 art. 16.k bureaucrats, these guys are buying 0.01. You're a nerd if you understood what I just said. Basically, we want to distribute the wealth in a way where the poor people are super poor so the rich people can be even richer. Capitalism at its finest. And so for the next few months, we surged on ahead constructing academy after academy. With all the Austrian children going into art, the culture began to flourish. Yeah, look, demand is going up now. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Yo, what the heck? People are buying our art. Mr. Chadolf GPTler, uh, imagine he has a mustache, okay? But Chadolf GPTler is killing it, bro. Yeah, basically, Chad GPT was supposed to roleplay as him, but. Eh, uh, I got lazy. After Schmittler commissioned the academies to write a totally not controversial anthem, we finally figured out how to draw realistic stick figures. Impressed, this drew many investors to our booming academies. This was good because it meant more rich people to buy more art and to invest in private construction. 
Yep, and the, their uh, wealth is going up. And the academics are actually almost there too. Academics can almost buy their own art as well. With a few government subsidies, the investors and the artists began to accumulate wealth. In no time, they had enough income to actually afford their own paintings. So right now, they don't get dividends, but capitalists can get, can get dividends from the profit of the actual building they work in. That means that the more money this art academy makes, the richer the capitalists will get. Hearing of this advancement, Russia decided to import a lot of our art. This was amazing considering they had nearly double our population, which meant more rich people to buy our paintings. So after signing a trade agreement with the Russians, we signed a few pacts with the French to ward off the looming Prussians in the north, who no doubt were jealous of our cultural bastion of art. Since food was very expensive in our market, we began importing grain and groceries from our new partners, which hopefully would drive the price down. Theoretically, our people would pay less for food, giving them more money for leisure goods, such as art. The standard of living should go up for these guys, which is good. You know, the more people that get to 20 standard of living, the better. The only bad thing is that they're going to get paid more, which means that the profitability of our businesses are going to go down because they're going to be paying their employees more. That meant less rich shareholders who would throw random pocket change at million dollar paintings. Too bad slavery's gone. In the game, of course. <laughs> By now, all of Europe had heard of the wondrous Vienna Institute of Art. Funny Mustache Man's reputation was great, managing to convince not one, but two new Italian miners into the Austrian Customs Union. Here, let's see if we can get any more people in our Customs Union. Yes, we can. Tuscany. Boom. And boom. Sardinia Piedmont. We're taking over the Italian peninsula. Look at this, dude. <laughs> now this was a small step. The economies of these nations were tiny, but Schmittler had gotten a taste of power. You see, one of the biggest problems was that we couldn't produce any of the other goods, so we had to outsource everything. Our small market members were nice to have, but they simply didn't have the industrial base to keep up with our demand. And that was when we set sights on what had once been the greatest empire in the world. This was a crazy idea, but if it succeeded, we would have way more resources and way more people to sell our art to. Yet it would be nearly impossible. Except I had a genius idea. Alright, let's try to find some- let's try to get some trade with uh, Spain here. Cause Spain- if we can snag a trade agreement, we might be able to get them in our customs union. Which would be insane. Uh, they need iron, so do we. <laughs> uh, do they need art? They have no art. Well, let's trade some art to them, shall we? Look, their demand for fine art shot up. Just because we introduced art to their people. We began flooding their market with goods. Glass, lead, grain, everything from our market was being shipped overseas. They didn't care about us now, but they would when we supplied them everything they had. Perfect, perfect. They want a trade agreement. Perfect. Oh, we can get a defensive pack there. Let's snag that. We are so close. We need eight more. And while the art academies grew at home, the Spanish grew more addicted to our art. Each day, our markets grew more and more intertwined, but would it actually be enough? Invite to Customs Union. Let's get it, let's get it. Wait, what? <laughs> Dude, look at this Austrian market! Austrian market! <laughs> what the heck? Yo, this is wild. We're taking over the world. <laughs> oh, this is funny. After absorbing literally millions of people into our market, the power started getting to Schmittler's head. Almost immediately, he started flooding the Belgian markets in hopes of bringing their rich industry into Austria. Schmittler's dream was to bring boatloads of our art to the other European powers, and he was becoming more ambitious each day that passed. We have Emperor Louis Napoleon Bonaparte, good mustache man, as an ally, and we are funny mustache man. We have Spain with the defensive pact, we have Belgium, we have Russia as an ally, like, I think now we should be okay to turn our attention away from Prussia and uh, attack Great Qing. But that was a seriously bold move. There's no way even funny mustache man would actually- Alright, we're attacking them. We have the- okay, they're confident right now. Not after I call my boy in. 
With the combined threat of the Austrian and Russian armies on their northern border, China backed down without a single shot fired. And there we go! We have a treaty port, Wenzhou. While the uncivilized savages had no interest in sophisticated art right now, once they modernized, their massive population would be a gold mine for our academies. But Radolf Schmittler's aggressive diplomatic policies would soon catch up to him. Oh! Out of nowhere, the Prussians sent Schmittler an ultimatum. They wanted us to relinquish all ambition to unify Germany, or else they would invade and take West Galicia. Schmittler was taken aback, speechless at the demands of his North German brethren. He had no intention of unifying Germany in the first place. He just wanted to paint. But this was a betrayal he could not let go. Over the following weeks, hundreds of thousands of soldiers flocked to the front lines, totaling over one million troops combined. Let's call in the French, and they should join. Whom? The Russians? Russia! Mother Russia! Great powers began to stack both sides. We called France and Russia, while Prussia brought Queen Victoria herself to their side. A great European war, on a scale never seen before, brewed on the horizon. Whichever side emerged victorious would shape the destiny of the world forever. On January 14, 1846, the Great War erupted when the front lines exploded in a rain of artillery. Here we go! 22 Belgians against uh, Hohenzollern. Look at the French! The French are killing the Prussians! Oh snap! Look, the Russians are holding off against the British. Day after day, our allies relentlessly attacked the enemy, driving them back to their homeland. But Schmittler was not one to be outdone. And the, the Belgians moved. What the heck? There's nobody on this front. Seeing this gap, Schmittler committed 95,000 troops to the Western Front. He needed a distraction before the enemy realized their crucial mistake. As his troops traveled into France, Funny Mustache Man spoke with Good Mustache Man, and the two emperors formulated a plan. At first light, a massive French army slammed into the British defenses guarding the pass between the Sudeten Mountains. Within hours, thousands from both sides lay dead or dying. It was a bloodbath. But this was enough as Schmittler, in a matter of mere days, had invaded and occupied all of Western Prussia. Hanover is getting killed! Yeah! We'll take it back for the Germans! As news of the Blitzkrieg spread swiftly across the front lines, the fighting grew more fierce. As more and more bodies littered the bloody battlefields, the count soared over one million soldier casualties and countless more civilian ones. Battle after battle, our unified alliance drove the fierce Prussians back, and before long, Schmittler found himself marching through Berlin victorious. The days following the peace treaty was a time of diplomacy. After utterly bashing the Prussians, Schmittler proclaimed himself as the rightful leader to unify Germany. While his people were torn and divided in the aftermath of the Great War, he knew he was their savior, dreaming of a great unified German empire where artists like himself could prosper. And many others across Europe supported him. Oh yeah, we can invite the Belgians into our customs union. Alright, we want to get a trade agreement, customs union, with good old Denmark. Boom. Oh my goodness, we are taking over Europe. With art. Oh, I don't know how this happened, but it is. It's happening. Funny Mustache Man was on a meteoric rise, hailed as the strongest man in Europe. Across the nation, the Hungarians hailed him as the rightful ruler, forming the great Austro-Hungarian Empire. And this was not so great. Oh, heck no. Heck no, heck no, dude. That's gross. But his influence didn't stop there, as a few days later, Sweden and its own subjects joined the market. Dude, look at this. Yo, we're conquering the world. 
With all the new members, our standard of living was going up. Because of the growing market, Schmittler ordered a massive expansion to the academy. After a short vacation in the imaginary country of Legoland, we liberated the Germans living there. Our people hailed Schmittler, and many of our German subjects wanted to join our great nation. Hello, German. Prestige, boy. Third. Oh! <laughs> That's disgusting. Oh, no, no, I don't want to look at this. <laughs> look at our GDP. Our GDP shot up so much. We were at like 25, we shot up like 10 million. Schmittler was one step closer to realizing his dream of a unified Germany. All he needed now was pan-nationalism, but there was one issue. That was too complicated for our monkey brains. So Funny Mustache Man ordered the construction of tons of universities nationwide. It's not art, but it's a government necessity, so it's allowed. Dude, we could almost invite the Ottomans to our customs union. No way. After flooding their market with tons of our goods... Custom Union accepted. <laughs> Look at this! <laughs> what? That's wild, dude. And then soon, hopefully we'll control Germany and the rest of Germany. We are third in the world. We're catching up to France, actually. Holy moly schmackamoly. So while we waited for our scientists to research pan-nationalism, Schmittler expanded his economic influence into Persia. While extremely undeveloped now, their vast natural resources would be invaluable to our market members' economies. Then, Schmittler turned his focus to reducing the price of paper, which had gotten too expensive over the past few years. This would be incredible at increasing academy profit, which no doubt would skyrocket. Our art would take the world by storm. But then, he received grave news. Terrified of his growing power, Schmittler's own ally, Good Mustache Man, Emperor of France, declared that he would protect the Prussians of Schmittler's tyranny no matter what. And to make things worse, our other ally, Russia, and many of the other great powers would intervene against us as well. The threat of a unified Germany under Radolf Schmittler was too great. Schmittler was devastated. His very own friends, who he had fought alongside during the Great War, now betrayed him? For days and nights, weeks and months, Schmittler was paralyzed with a broken heart. Perhaps his ambitions were too great. Perhaps the German people were better off broken and divided. But then Schmittler realized the true enemy. Across the nation, the military stormed through every city, displacing and forcing all non-German citizens to move to ghettos, separate from the true superior people. He launched into fervorous speeches, moving the country to action with mere words. By the thousands, young German men flocked to the armies inspired to take the fight to their oppressors. All across the German nations, Schmittler was gaining popularity and many miners began supporting his idea of unification. His words were so powerful, even the Prussians, once our mortal enemy, called for a united Germany under Schmittler's rule. By this point, the other nations could do nothing but watch, hope, and pray as radical nationalism raged over Germany like an untamed wildfire. And on September 23, 1872, Radolf Schmittler called for the Great Anschluss, where every single German nation voted whether they wanted to join the great unified country of Germany. All hail the Kaiser. We have done it, men. We have done it. Overnight, a glorious nation was born, stretching from the Baltic to the Mediterranean back to the North Sea. Germany skyrocketed to the richest country in Europe, home to 63 million hardworking Germans. But their market extended even further, from the frigid mountains of Norway all the way to the floodplains of Sudan. But most glorious of all were the heaps of art painted each day. The next nine top producers of art combined couldn't even reach half of our production. Nobody could stand in Schmittler's way now. Almost 2,000? Make sure you like and subscribe. Now watch this video. And thanks to the Patreon supporters who stuck with me. These videos take a lot out of me, so I appreciate it.